Welcome back. The term network has a few descriptions. The definition we are interested in for computers is a group or system of interconnected people or things. So by connecting computers together, we create a network. There are of course many ways to connect them, but before we get into that, what's the point? Why do we want to connect computers together? Well, once devices are connected, they can share data and resources. We can move data in the form of files, for example, from one computer to another, or we can share a printer between work colleagues or family members. Connecting computers in a home or office environment creates a network. This type of network is often called a local area network or LAN for short. A single LAN can range in size from just two computers connected and sharing files in a single room to an entire office block consisting of thousands of computers over many floors. To connect two computers together, you just need a single special type of network cable called a crossover cable. But if you want to connect more than two, then you need some network specific hardware. First, you'll need a hub or a switch. Hubs and switches perform the same function, but in a slightly different way. Hubs aren't around much anymore, so let's just look at switches. A cable is connected from each computer to the switch. When a computer wants to talk to another, a signal is sent to the switch, which then directs the message to the connected computer to receive the message. To connect our small home network to the internet, which in itself is just a very big network of connected devices and other networks, we need another device called a router. The job of the router is to control the flow of traffic between the two connected networks. On one side is your home network and on the other is the internet. Each time the router receives a packet of data, it works out which network the packet is for and directs it accordingly. In most small networks, particularly in most homes, the router and switch function are built into one device, normally just referred to as a router. Laptops, tablets and smartphones can all communicate without seeming to be connected to a switch or router. These devices all communicate wirelessly. In a large network in an office or school, they communicate wirelessly to the rest of the network through devices called access points. These act as a gateway between the wired devices on one side and the wireless devices on the other. Again, in a small network such as you'll find in homes, the job of the access point is done by the router. So one device, often just called a router, actually performs at least three functions. That of a router, a switch and an access point. All packaged into a small box roughly the size of a book. The ECDL syllabus refers to modems. These are another way to connect to the internet another network or just to another computer I would normally replace the router in my previous descriptions. They are an old technology and only used for slow internet connections such as using a fixed telephone line to connect. In large networks, particularly networks used by companies, you will find one or more servers. A server is a dedicated computer which looks after the security of the network or manages shared resources such as the internet access or email or it may store or host shared files and folders. Networks sound expensive, don't they? Well, they can be expensive to set up. Normally, they will evolve over time, starting with just a router and switch to allow devices to connect to the internet. Then a shared printer may be added. And as the business expands, more computers are connected together. So a switch with higher capacity is needed. Then a server will be added to add a layer of security and allow files to be shared and so on. As the network grows, the cost to replace the components increases. However, the benefits offered save money in the long run, such as ease, security, and speed of sharing files, or an expensive item such as a printer can be shared between many people. I've mentioned it already, but the internet is a global network of linked network and devices. Let's take a closer look at this. By viewing this video, you have been able to connect a device to the internet, either a mobile phone, a tablet, or a full-blown computer. There are many other devices that can connect to the internet, such as printers to automatically order replacement ink and paper when they are running low, or digital cameras that can automatically upload any pictures that are taken, or there are even some refrigerators that can be connected to the internet. I don't have one of these, but I guess you can order new food when you're getting low. 
I guess there is something in always knowing you are able to have a fresh pint of milk in the fridge. One of the most common things to do on the internet is to access the World Wide Web, often shortened to www. That's still a lot of syllables, so it's often shortened further to just web. At its essence, the web is a vast collection of interconnected files. Each of these interconnected files is called a web page. Two or more related web pages form a website. To be classed as a website, the web pages are normally stored in the same location as each other and will often share the same design theme and elements. When I said that web pages from the same website are normally stored in the same location, what I meant is that they are stored on the same server. Remember, a server is a computer that is dedicated to one or more functions on a network. So in this case, the server will host the website. Many people call the World Wide Web the internet, although in most conversations it doesn't matter. Technically, this isn't accurate. The World Wide Web is just one of the services that runs on the internet. Some of the others are email, VoIP, which stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. It allows for voice calls to be routed through the internet, thus saving money, particularly for long distance calls. A popular service in this section is Skype. Another popular service that runs on the internet is Instant Messaging, or IM for short, which allows direct text messaging between individuals or groups. One of the most popular services in this sector is WhatsApp. Just remember that all these World Wide Web, Email, VoIP and IM are services that run on the internet. Another term you may have heard in passing, particularly in a school, college or larger company setting, is intranet. That's internet, but with the middle E replaced with an A to give us intranet. But what is an intranet? Well, the definition for intranet is a computer network for sharing information, collaboration tools, operational systems, and other computing services within an organization, usually to the exclusion of access by outsiders. And that's straight from Wikipedia. So whereas the internet is a public network and is open so anyone can access the services, such as visiting websites, an intranet will provide its services only to a particular organization, such as a school or college. You may find various web pages on an intranet, but those pages will not be accessible outside the organization. Email is another good example of something you may find on an intranet. The company email system may only be accessible when you are connected directly to their network or intranet. Just to be clear, it's not technically in the curriculum, but many organizations make their intranet available over the internet. You may find that you can go to a website to access your company's email system, for example. This is officially called an extranet, although this term is very rarely used, mostly as it's almost second nature for organizations to offer this type of access. Building on this, what if you want to access the organization's shared files and folders while working remotely? Some organizations offer website-based access to the files and folders, but these can be pretty tedious to use. You need to access the files as though you were actually sitting at a desk within the organization, even though you are halfway across the world, or maybe your company uses a specific application that is only available from within the organization. Well, this is where a VPN or virtual private network comes in very useful. A VPN creates a private tunnel across a public network, such as the internet, between your computer and your organization. Once connected, your computer operates just as though it was connected directly to the organization's network. The private tunnel is nice and secure, so nobody on the internet can see anything that you're doing. You may have seen adverts across the internet advising that your internet traffic isn't secure unless you buy or pay a subscription to use the advertiser's VPN. These adverts can be highly misleading. VPNs offer no real additional protection for you while you're browsing the web. All you're doing is redirecting your network traffic to go through the VPN provider. They can be useful for making it look as though you reside in a different country, as your point of access to the internet will be from the VPN provider, not from where you are physically connected. Let me explain that a little better. When I connect to the internet, it is possible for apps and websites to figure out where I'm connected from. If I use a VPN, then all my network traffic is directed through the tunnel created by the VPN. So if I want to access a website on the internet, the request to display the page goes through the VPN and then to the internet via the VPN organization's 
internet connection. As far as the website can see, I'm now located wherever the VPN host's internet connection is. Why might this be useful? Well, some countries restrict what websites can be accessed. So by using a VPN, I'll be able to access blocked content or sometimes services such as Netflix only offer content to certain countries. By using a VPN, I can change my location to access the content. That was quite a detailed explanation of VPNs. For the curriculum, just remember that they allow you to connect to a remote local area network to give your computer complete access to files, folders, shared devices, applications, and services of a private LAN. In summary, we defined the term network, outlined the purpose of a network, that's to share and access data and devices securely. We define the term internet, identify some of the main uses like World Wide Web, or web for short, VoIP, which stands for voice over IP, or internet protocol, allowing you to make phone calls over the internet with services like Skype. Then there's email and IM, with services such as WhatsApp. Lastly, we define the terms intranet, an internet-like experience only accessible from within a company or other organization, and virtual private network, or VPN, which allows you to access a company's internet and other shared resources over the internet. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.